Last thing we'll talk about uh, in terms of adjustments is going to be the truss rod adjustment. And the truss rod adjustment is going to be under this cover. And here's where I'll use my little Phillips screw driver to take off the cover. And I already know I'm going to have to adjust this truss rod. So let's get the cover off. All right. One more screw. And we'll take the cover off. And we'll find ourselves a Allen wrench that's going to go in there. So I've backed this off to what we call a neutral point. And there's about a Oh, there's about an eighth of a turn here that as I turn it, nothing happens, okay? And if I turn it clockwise, as I look down at the end, I am tightening up the rod. And if I turn it this way, I am loosening the rod. And what I'm going to be looking for is I want to go around to, oh, maybe the fifth or sixth fret. And I'm going to hold down the fourth string on the first fret. And I'm going to hold down the fourth string on the twelfth fret. And I'm looking for a little bit of a gap right here. Okay, now I don't know if this is double acting. Let me see if it is. All right, hold that down. Hold this down. And it is, okay. And what I'm looking for is uh, I use the fact that it's double acting uh, because I'm, I'm, I'm actually, what I've done is I've actually made it uh, come forward and I put a little bit of bow in the neck. And what you're looking for is that with the truss rod, if you hold it down on the first fret and you hold it down on the 12th fret, somewhere around the fifth fret, fifth or sixth fret, you want to see about 15 thousandths of an inch, 10 to 15 thousandths of an inch. It's not much. But here's the problem, and I need my special ruler to explain this. So here's, how, here's why the truss rod is needed. Now, using this as to simulate the string and using this plane of the banjo, most of us think of the uh, string as being in motion like this. And in terms of being on the banjo, because we pluck that string down, we tend to think of the string actually going like this uh, as it's plucked. In reality, what happens is, once we pluck a string, the first or second vibration may be up and down, but then it starts to rotate. So it'll start going like this, and it will actually rotate all around. So, and you can see this yourself, when you pluck a string, and you look down at it this way, you'll see it's going this way and this way as you look down on the top of it. So it's actually rotating around, and that's because of the the, the sp spring pressure from the neck. Now the other thing is that when we pluck a string here, we're not plucking it in the middle. So because we plucked it here, this, this action being the, the highest point of the uh, travel of the string is not going to happen in the middle like we imagine. It's actually going to happen here. And what happens is that uh, the string actually goes like this. But the next time it comes around, it goes like this. And it's going, because we plucked it on the end, not in the middle, it goes like this. And this low part is right around the fifth or sixth stride, um, fret. So what happens is when we pluck it here, if you could measure that here and then measure it out there, we're right around the fifth fret. Uh, and this is the same for a guitar, that this is the area where we have to worry about the string hitting because we, we plucked it. So we, we intentionally uh, allow it to bend right in this area. And uh, on a guitar, the stress is so much from the strings that all we have to do is just loosen the truss rod a little bit. Um, and by loosening the truss rod, 
the neck is going to come forward uh, due to spring tension or the string tension and is going to give us that little bit of a bend. If we take and we look down this and I look, I sight down here, I don't want it perfectly flat. I want a little bit of a bend, which is that's what this has right now. That's called relief. And primarily, that's what the truss rod uh, is there for. It's, we're giving the uh, entire string uh, the relief it needs to not vibrate in this area because we plucked it here. And again, the string is not going like this. It's going like this. Uh, if you did that with a bungee cord, it's sometimes easier to explain. So this part here, where it bends down, is going to hit the frets right here. This part here, when it bends down, is, is not touching anything. We don't have the fretboard underneath here, so we don't have a problem there. So we always have to make sure there's a little bit of clearance right here. So contrary to popular belief, where most people think that the, uh, the truss rod is there to adjust the action, well, it does adjust the action, but it's not there to adjust the action like a guitarist or a banjoist would think of it. In other words, the truss rod is not there to make it easy for you to play in terms of lowering the action. The truss rod is there to allow us some manipulation of the way the neck is bending to, uh, to, to actually come out with this relief or this bend in the neck. Uh, and that's primarily what we're after with the truss rod.